In this video, we will show you how to replace your lower ball joint. Let's get started. Safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Let's continue on by removing our 32 millimeter axle nut. Once you have the axle nut out of the way, continue on with a hammer and punch. We'll come right in the center and break the axle free from the wheel bearing. Let's continue on by making our way along the back side of the knuckle. You're looking for the caliper. You'll find that you have two 15 millimeter headed bolts that hold the caliper bracket to the knuckle itself. Let's remove each of those mounting bolts, inspect the pads, and then set the caliper aside. Hang that caliper so it's putting no pressure on your flex hose. Remove your brake rotor, give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now let's pay attention to our ABS wire. Disconnect it from the bracket. Follow it down to where it connects onto the knuckle. You'll find an eight millimeter headed bolt holding this in place. Remove the bolt and then carefully remove the sensor from the area. Once you have the sensor out of there, give it a quick inspection. Make sure it doesn't look cracked or damaged in any way. Set that aside. Now let's move along to where our outer tie rod end connects to the steering knuckle. Along the bottom, you'll find one 15 millimeter headed nut. Remove it, inspect it, start it back on there a couple threads. Continue on with your hammer. We want to carefully hit just along the knuckle, being extremely careful not to damage the outer tie rod end in any way. Once it's broken free, remove the tie rod end from the knuckle. Move along to your lower ball joint nut. Use a 24 millimeter socket to remove this Start it back on there just a couple threads, and then we're gonna continue by breaking the ball joint free from the lower control arm. Now we can start separating the lower control arm from the ball joint slash knuckle assembly. To do this, you can either use a ball joint separator, come up along the top here and press on the center of the stud, or just use a hammer and give it a couple loving bonks to break it free. Once it looks as though it's separating, we can continue. Now let's move along to the top of the knuckle. You'll find a 15 millimeter headed pinch bolt that makes its way through the knuckle, holding it to the strut. Remove your pinch bolt. Now let's use our hammer along the top area of the knuckle. We're gonna give this a couple loving bonks, try driving it down off of the front strut. When you do this, be extremely careful for your axle. This is going to come down and it could potentially put a serious bend on the axle itself. Just make sure I push the axle through as I continue. Separate this. Now we can swing the knuckle, pull the axle out of the area, remove your ball joint nut, and remove the knuckle from the lower control arm. Now that we have the knuckle off of the vehicle, we can continue on removing the lower ball joint from it. The way that Ford set this up, it's a pretty bad angle to try to put a ball joint press into this area. So what we will have to do is use some snap ring pliers, remove the snap ring, 
And then generally you just want to try to use a hammer or air chisel and try to punch this right out of here. Keep in mind, whenever you remove a snap ring, it is under spring tension. It could potentially fly off. With the snap ring out of the way, we're going to continue on driving the ball joint down and out of the knuckle. I'll use my air hammer. There it is, friends. Before we install our brand new ball joint into the knuckle, you need to pay attention to a couple things. Along this area is directly where your shield is going to sit. You need to make sure that it's clean and free of any debris. Speaking of this area, inside this circle is where the ball joint's going to be. Go ahead and clean out that area as well. Give it a quick inspection. Once you've done all that, we'll continue on to cleaning up our shield. Now for the shield, you're gonna find that you have two mating surfaces. You have one over here that the ball joint presses directly against, and then the other side that goes up against the knuckle. Go ahead and clean those off as well. Okay friends, let's get ready for our installation. Before you put in the ball joint, take your protective shield. You'll notice on the shield you have a square cutout that needs to fit over this notch. Line up your ball joint hole. Now we're going to pay attention to the ball joint itself. Looking at the end of the boot closest to the stud, you can see it has a little notched area. That needs to be facing inboard. Now that we have everything aligned, we're going to continue on by trying to press this into the knuckle. When you do this, you're going to have to have something along the backside here to press against. For this, I'll just use the backside of a brake pad. The next thing you want to do is make sure you use a cup of some sort that can fit over the outer lip of the ball joint so you do not damage the ball joint boot. Once you have all that in place, let's continue on with our press. Once you have the ball joint pressed all the way in, you should be able to see the groove for your snap ring making its way all the way around. Continue on with installing your locking snap ring. We'll slide that into place along the groove and lock it in. Once you have it in there, just try to work it around a little bit with a screwdriver or a pry bar just to make sure it's completely seated. Now we can get back over to the vehicle. Let's take our lower ball joint and slide it into the lower control arm. Once you have that in place, we're going to continue by putting the axle into the back side of the wheel bearing. At the same time as we finish sliding that into position, we need to pull this down and slide the bottom of the strut into the top of the knuckle. Clean the threads on your pinch bolt, get ready for installation. Once that's started, snug it up and then torque it to 74 foot-pounds. Install your lower ball joint nut. Snug it up and torque that to 111 foot-pounds. Once you have it torqued, the next thing you need to do is pay attention to the ball joint nut you'll find that it has several slots making their way around. Looking through those slots, you need to try to find the hole that goes through the center stud of the ball joint. If it does not line up, continue tightening your mounting nut until one does. Slide that through, peen it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up while you're driving down the road.
Continue on to your outer tie rod end. Slide that into place in the knuckle. Start on the mounting nut, bottom that out, and then torque it to 35 foot-pounds. Install your ABS sensor. Start in the mounting bolt, snug it up, and torque it to 80 inch pounds. Resecure the ABS wire into its mounting bracket. Continue on with some copper never seize on the mating surface. Once we've done that, you want to make sure you clean the back side of your rotor. We'll continue on by installing the rotor. Hold your rotor in place with one of your lug nuts. Continue on to your brake caliper. Once you have the caliper in place, continue on by installing both of the caliper bracket bolts. We'll bottom these out and then torque them to 98 foot-pounds. After you've done that, you can continue on by putting on your axle nut. When you do this, you want to make sure that you tighten it up by hand as much as possible. Continue on by putting the wheel on. After you have the wheel on there, start on all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and bottom those out as well. Now we can get the wheel safely back on the ground, we'll torque the axle nut, and then all five of our lug nuts. With the wheel safely on the ground, torque the axle nut to 207 foot-pounds. We'll torque these to 100 foot-pounds in a crisscross manner. Torqued. At this point, take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises, make sure there's no ABS light, and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.